Hi, I'm Mason, and this is Cinema Rewind. We take a look at movies five years back and beyond. Today we're talking about the 2005 movie, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Based on the classic books that are based on the classic British radio play, and there's also an 80s TV show and a video game in there somewhere, all written by Douglas Adams. The movie is directed by Garth Jennings and stars Martin Freeman, Mose Def, Zoe Deschanel, Sam Rockwell, Alan Rickman, Stephen Fry, John Malkovich, and many more British people. The plot. Mere seconds before the Earth is to be demolished by an alien construction crew, journeyman Arthur Dent is swept off the planet by his friend, Ford Prefect, a researcher pinning a new edition of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So most of the story is about Arthur meeting a girl named Trisha and falling instantly in love with her. The same night he meets her, the president of the universe, Zaphod Beeblebrox, flirts and steals Trisha away from Arthur and takes her to explore the galaxy. Later, Arthur and Ford hitch a ride on an alien spaceship as the Earth is being destroyed to make way for a galaxy superhighway. And after being found in said spaceship and torturously read Vogon poetry. Vogon poetry is widely accepted as the third worst in the universe. Are shipped off into the vacuum of space. They're then improbably picked up by the president's spaceship, and Arthur and Trisha are reunited. They find out that the president, Zaphod, is trying to find out the answer to life, the universe, and everything, and is on his way to a planet that houses the smartest supercomputer ever made, hoping to find some answers. The good stuff. The story is funny and meaningful. The acting is brilliant, giving the strange source material, and the special effects are absolutely gorgeous. This movie is worth watching the director's commentary. It happened in a golden era of puppetry and computer graphics. There are a lot of practical effects, and I, I love, love practical, practical effects. effects. I believe they're what sell a movie monster, alien, what have you. There's also less CGI and more compositing in this film. CGI is when something is created in the computer, animated, and then put in the scene. Compositing is the process of putting two pieces of video together. The pitfalls. While it may be the nature of the story, the plot seems like it has a little too much going on. There's so many loose plot threads. They all get tied up in the end, but this is one of those movies where you need to watch it once or twice to get everything. The music. Composed by Joby Talbot, the music perfectly matches the tone this movie's trying to convey. Convey. And I really couldn't imagine it with any other music or instrumentation. In conclusion. While poking fun at classic sci-fi, this movie does the genre justice and, in the process, makes a funny, quirky, lovable film with amazing special effects and music. I'm Mason, I like movies, and so long and thanks for all the fish.